what's up fisher people it is like stupid hot out here in north dakota right now and i'm getting out the crankbaits seriously for the first time this year try to cover some water and run into the most active fish do some fish locating we're going to start off simple with just some Flicker shads, flicker minnows in uh, fairly shallow water. Later, I might get out the uh, lead cord and go a little deeper. But in the meantime, I just want to see what I can get to go with this. I'm going to start shallow, like I said, maybe work deeper later on. And hope to find some of these fish on the east side of Lake Sakakawea, but perhaps willing to chase a crankbait in the heat. So stay tuned. Well, this isn't good. First fish. You know what this guy is, right? Son of a gun. There's a fish. Oh. It was a smallie that jumped and spit it. <laughs> oh, shoot. Not a walleye and I can't even show it off. That's a shame. Flicker shad. Here's another fish that doesn't feel like a smallie. It feels like a gold eye. Ripes. Whoa. This purple flicker shad's getting a lot of action. But I haven't seen the right fish yet. We got a skier. And I think it's our first walleye. Stacked up in this little neck down area, this little channel. I saw about five marks there and hammered one of them real quick. All right. Let's see if we can keep this going. Maybe find some bigger ones. That was about 15, 14 feet of water. Let's fine tune. Two minutes later, another one. Feels like it could be another walleye. Looks like a skier walleye. Skiing across the water. Maybe an inch thicker. We'll keep going. <clears throat> oh, we got off. Shoot. So I had those two quick ones. Then I tried casting in that box. I thought that sounded like a lot of fun and I couldn't get them casting for whatever reason. So I just kept moving on, came to a new spot here. That felt like another eater sized walleye, but he got off. Sometimes they come off. What a bummer, but we can keep working the spot. See if we can find some more fish. Well, it's 10 after 10 and at like 920, we completely lost the slight breeze that we had. It is already almost unbearable. Had another couple of pullbacks that didn't stay on. Now I'm switching to lead core. Going a little deeper. 21 feet now, push out of 25, 28. We'll see what happens. It's such a wind driven lake. And it's supposed to be 102 degrees today. So I don't know what type of luck we're gonna have the rest of the day, honestly. But we'll give it 30 minutes with the lead core and that might do it if we don't get into something good because I'm roasting out here. In terms of running lead core, I got these Shields lead core rods, the extreme trolling series. I got the shorties out just because they're easier to handle if I'm by myself and easier to reel in on the video. They're nice to put out the back of the boat and then you got the 10 footers wide for a good spread. I got the regular lead core, so it's 30 feet 
to every five feet down and every color of lead course 30 feet long. So if you go by colors, one color to five feet of depth. My wider rods, I bought the new advanced lead core. So that's more of like a 30 feet of line to eight feet down kind of deal, which would be kind of nice reeling in less line. Uh, you're basically just trying to let out enough line to figure out how to get right close to the bottom where those fish are. And if you start banging bottom a little bit, just crank it up a few times. I'm going kind of slow, 1.8, because I feel like that's a better chance to trigger a bite right now, but I really don't know what to expect. We'll see what happens. Well, the lead core is done. Last gasp effort. Snap jigging some rock piles. There's a mark down there, you never know. Let's see if we can get something going, but uh, I don't know. I think we're just gonna turn this into a fishing report slash guiding update now. Um, fishing's been great as long as it's not 100 degrees and no freaking wind. But today is that. We've caught a lot of fish. We've caught some nice fish. The current leader of that wall hangers contest is 27 and a half. So that's cool. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll have some better videos when we get some better weather. Hold up. It ain't over yet. We ain't closing out nothing. Well, I found myself a pod of these walleyes, it turns out, on this rock pile that wouldn't take the jigging wrap, but they will take a night crawler on a jig. And they are not large, but that was a fast bite. Maybe with any luck, there are also some bigger ones down here and we can get one of those but you would have thought the big ones would hit that jig wrap it was a pretty fast bite with that crawler i'm surprised i don't have another one yet there's a fish down there more than one this is called take what it gives you now there's one right under the boat that actually looks like a longer mark. There's two under the boat now. Maybe three. Just waiting for that little thunk. Waiting for the thunk. Then I'll give it a second. Make sure he's on there, feel for his weight, and set the hook. And hopefully catch a fish. Huh. Huh. Hmm. Maybe I need a fresh crawler. Got him. <laughs> he feels bigger than the first one. Not a lot, but definitely bigger. Like you could keep that, you could eat that guy. So today's answer to the heat, live bait moving slow, do on deep humps. Sorry buddy. Fish in the boat at least. If you had a slip bobber rigged up, that could probably be an effective way to catch these fish too. I don't. Well, do I? I think I might. But the first thing I grabbed was a jigging rod. That's my instinctive move. And it's working. I'd like to see if I can get a bigger one down here. They're on the screen. They're down there. Oh, did I just pull into one? I got some slack line there. Nope. Last one I got pitching out a little ways. I see marks under the boat, but it almost seems like slowly crawling the crawler around helped get that other bite. So, you know, why don't we do that? 
Why don't we? Why don't we do what seemed to work? And it would be somewhere between a bottom bouncer presentation, moving at speed and a vertical thing, you know, covering some water, having the bait move away from a fish a little bit. Chase it. Come after it. Oh, here's a bite. I don't know if he's on there yet. He keeps letting go. Or is he running at me? Yeah. Fish on the hook. He's another one like the first one. That's not gonna eat. Action though. <laughs> Action. With 10 inch walleyes. Look at that. Rocking it. Still convinced there's gonna be a bigger one down here yet. Like 18, 18 inches. 17. 17 inch, I'll take 17. I'll take a 17 inch walleye right now in a heartbeat. We got like two mile an hour wind now, that helps. Is that a rock or a fish top? Like two mile an hour wind is huge right now. It's totally changed my perspective. Anything is possible with two mile an hour wind, folks. Yeah, it's gonna be 102 degrees, and it's already like 94. But, we got breeze, man. We got the wind. Whew. What does heat stroke feel like? I could probably pull spinners over this hump and catch these fish, I would imagine, but honestly, why right now? Some lively cows over there. And if I ran those crankbaits over this hump, I might get some bites, but I don't know, they just didn't seem that active. Now I got three under the boat again. There'll be another day for finishing crankbait stuff. We'll do more of that. It's July, what, 19? Yeah, we'll do more crankbait stuff soon. It's getting to be time. There's, it looks like some longer marks down there. I can't catch them. They won't hit the jig grab. I tried all kind. Of, I tried a hyper rattle, a fire tiger purge. I tried a purple jig wrap. I tried a white jig wrap. Didn't care. Just didn't care. <laughs> Let me tell you the real significance of these fish here. Besides the fact that they bit, and we got some hooks up on camera. This is the first time this year in Sakakawea that I've caught fish on an offshore deep water hump that's not directly adjacent to the river channel, which is a migration route. So, if you got some favorite humps that you haven't caught fish yet on and haven't been able to find fish, they might finally start to move into those places. Yeah, so I'll give some sunken islands and some offshore humps to look now. Thought I had one. Make sure he eats it this time. He didn't, he got off. He, oh, there's another bump. Either he came back or that's a separate fish, but I wasn't gonna miss him. Oh goodness. Goodness, look at that hog. Like that is potentially, I don't wanna get ahead of myself here, but if I were to measure that, I think it would have a chance at a state record. You know what, I'm not, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna measure it. I don't care about the accolades. You know, it's about the fishing and the enjoyment of it and how hard it is to unhook a 12 inch walleye sometimes. Yeah. One more time with the jig grab? No? Okay. 
Now we're gonna close this thing out. Moral of the day, sometimes you gotta slow down when it's hot. Best crankbait was the Purple Fire Tiger. And uh, I don't know, take it with the lake gives you. Have fun out there. Hold up. It ain't over yet. We ain't closing out nothing. Get on there. Get on there. <laughs> Might be the biggest of the day. Oh, there's an eater. There's an eater. Anybody want a fish fry? Oh, come on. Come on, be on there. <laughs> Turd. Turd. Why you? You gonna stay with it? No? You're just gonna tear it to shreds, huh? Oh, back. For more. Really? Come on. Finish your job. Your one job. Boo. I guess in his mind, he finished it. And we just finished this video. It's hot. What's going on, Randy? Searching for the lost drone, huh? Too hard to see. You need an underwater camera. Oh, well, I guess you need more than that. Murky water. Yeah, it might be a lost cause, but it's worth a shot. <laughs> 